So did you become an artist by accident or choice? Uh, I was, uh, well, as I, as I say, uh, well, I, I remember drawing when I was a kid, uh, actually tracing, I like to trace things. And I did a tracing one time and uh, my mother said it was very good. I don't know how one evaluates the tracing, but she said it was pretty good. And uh, I don't remember her ever saying a lot of things that I did were very good. So I guess I kind of uh, took it to heart and, uh, and thought that, uh, why is this not working? Okay. I think it is. Um, I was, uh, and then I, I drew a comic books copy. I went from tracing to copying. And, uh, you know, the Superman and Captain Marvel. I do remember the day that I drew uh, Mary Marvel. And uh, Mary Marvel had. Uh, a lightning bolt across her chest, just like uh, Captain Marvel did. Only Mary Marvel's lightning bolt made a funny change as it went across this curve. And I remember drawing that curve and uh, getting a real tingle. And I thought, boy, I like this drawing stuff. So then I spent, I remember spending a lot of time with drawing. Uh, in uh, Archie and Jughead, Betty and Veronica. They looked exactly alike except one had black hair and one had blonde hair. But I remember drawing those curves on them too and uh, enjoying it very much. <laughs> so, With so it may be that that had a, an influence on uh, why I became an artist. Was that an accident? Or it's just sex, I guess. Did you prefer the blonde or the brunette? Well, I think uh, Archie preferred the brunette. And I think I liked the blonde because, uh, I guess because Archie always uh, kind of treated her not as, as well as uh, he did the, the brunette. Did you ever read those? Occasionally. I wasn't really much of a comic fan. Oh, well, I was real big on comic books. No, I don't read the comics today. Oh, really? Oh, I don't either. I don't read them today. I got over the curves. <laughs> now, I, now I get, uh, you can buy stuff at the local, uh, <laughs> at the local uh, video stores, I guess. Oh, I'm just kidding. I, don't, I, don't, I actually don't do that. Sex and art go together? Well, you know, I'm, I, I don't know that it goes together, it did for me at that time. Well, then you had, uh, then in college you got to draw, you know, in not very many classes in college do you have, uh, you know, people without any clothes coming into the class to uh, pose for you, you know, so I got to, so in that way I guess, uh, but it, it was different, you know, it was different then. You know, I guess it was, uh, you know, there wasn't anything real sexual about it. It was, you were more, it was more of a problem of trying to get an arm in the right place and the shoulder in the right place. It had nothing to do with that kind of a sex thing. Whereas when I was drawing Veronica, it, did, it really was. Well, I mean, did, did uh, being an artist work like being a quarterback of the football team? Did you get girls attracted to you or a certain type? I think in high school probably I got, uh, I mean it was, it was one thing that I did well and so you had, uh, I had, I was the chairman of the pep committee and uh, P 
painted a lot of signs, and so I'd have the tutors coming up and asking me to paint a sign for them. And, you know, oh, will you do this and will you put red in it? And sure, I'll put red in it. What else do you want, you know? <laughs> so I got a lot of, uh, you know, I got a lot of, it's something I can do, I guess. But that's right, you were, you were also an athlete. Uh, I played, uh, I only really, you know, I was an athlete, I was a, a game player. You know, baseball really isn't an athletic thing as much as it is more like a, it's more like playing chess, you know, it's not a, you know, you have to be kind of an athlete to, to do other things, but in baseball it's just more a, I don't know what it is. You know, in a way, it's, it's not like a team sport because you kind of do individual things in baseball, don't you? You know, you're at bat by yourself. And uh, when you catch a fly ball, I mean, there's a double play, so that's teamwork. But as a catcher, oh, that was something. How about this? Huh? Do I look like a catcher? <laughs> You think there's an influence there? Well, I can remember looking through the grid of the catcher's mask and I liked it because I could see the right left fielder in this grid and the right fielder in this grid in, in this rectangle and in this middle rectangle I saw the pitcher in the center fielder so I could and I always uh, I remember uh, my friend George Keithley said something about uh, I think he pointed it out to me the fact that you know maybe if I work with grids because the uh, because I was a, worked with grids as a kid. I mean, as a, as a baseball player, I saw the world as a grid. <coughs> Were you a catcher? Kelly. In what position did you play? I played in infield positions and I pitched. Oh. oh. And he tortured me as a catcher. Why? Well, he was he could because he could do it. Yeah. You know, I was I, he, I was a pitcher and I made these funny faces when I pitched. You know, and, uh, when I threw the ball. And, and as a catcher, he tortured me by, when he'd throw it back to me, he'd make the funny face. <laughs> and I couldn't make a funny face at him because I, would, had, to, I had to pitch. Uh -huh. You were in a more serious, that was more of a serious position. Huh? Yeah, man, you could get, I still remember the only home run that was hit off me. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Traumatic. Was it? Don't you remember all the traumatic things? Or do you remember all the happy in things? In life. Oh, in life, no. The traumatic things. Uh, gee, do I remember the traumatic things as well as I remember the... I think, don't, I think one tends to forget those, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of the negative stuff and tend to remember the good stuff. Well, that makes you an optimist and me a pessimist. Ah, 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 ah. Well, that could be. Yeah, I'm sure that's uh, or something probably like that. true. Yes. I see. Every. Some of the joyous things too. Some of the what? Some of the joyous things too. Uh -huh. So do you do you consider you and Matt a sort of uh, 
like father, like son in baseball? The... No. <laughs> what would that mean, though? To... You mean like, like uh, well, Matt never played baseball. No, but you're an artist. He's an artist. There are some famous baseball parents. And oh, oh, I see. Fathers. You mean like the Bonds, Bobby and Barry Bonds? Is that a father-son? I think so. And Griffey and, Griff, Griff, Griff and uh, Griffey and his father actually played in the same game. Oh, really? For Seattle. When Griffey was playing for Seattle, his father played, I think, just one game or maybe a couple of games for Seattle at the same time that uh, his son played. And they, so they played together, and then he retired. Hmm. Who was the other one that played for Baltimore? There was a, uh, there was there a catcher. How about, uh, yeah, there was another, a guy that another Seattle player, his father, the, see, the second baseman for Seattle, the one that was on steroids. What about the guy who had uh, most games played straight without... Oh, almost... yeah. Well, Lou Gehrig was the first one. But, Who was uh, that? Yeah, that's Ripken. Ripken. Wasn't his father a player? I don't know. Or his son? I don't know. I Cal know. Ripken Jr.? Yeah, that must be it. Yeah. Or is that his name? Cal Ripken Jr.? Is that... <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I think it's his name. But the guy that played second base for Seattle uh, actually came in for the most valuable player of the year, came in second place the year that... Uh, Ishiro came into the league. Two, two players from the same team were nominated for, or were ran for, I mean, I think one was first and one was second. And I can't, I've lost his name. His brother played for the Yankees. So three of them played. He and his brother and his father all played. So Mike, how are you most different than when you, from when you were a young kid or a young man? I hurt more. My body hurts a lot more. How about you? I can I can vouch for that. Uh, idea in my mind that this was going to work, and I see now that it's not going to work. Tell me. It's either too high or too low, can't, and I can't get it in the middle. Well, let's see if I move it over here. Oh, shoot, that isn't going to work. I don't think this is going to work. Since I'm gonna, I'm making this movie about you and a Reese. Yeah. Tell me about the first time you guys met, or how you met, and how you got together in this kind of interesting partnership. Uh, Reese was. Uh, yeah, ask him that question. I'd be interested in what he what he remembers. Uh, I got a studio downtown L.A. And uh, he was. Uh, It was such a good idea, too. Huh. I guess I'd have to cut a piece out of there. Uh, I found a, a studio in Los Angeles, and he had a small studio upstairs, and was introduced to me by the owner of the building as being a person that could uh, help me in, uh, you know, if I wanted to build a loft or anything in the studio, that he would that he would help me. And uh, so Matt moved in also, it was in the summer, so Matt always stayed with me in the summer. And the two of us, uh, and Arise would come down and cook for us. And I didn't have a kitchen, I didn't have a, so I didn't, all I had was a hot plate. But Arise would cook for us and the three of us would eat together and then I put in a, a bath, I had a toilet but no shower, so I put in a shower and I'd do the dishes in the shower. And uh, there's nothing more disgusting than uh, the next morning getting up and uh, slipping on uh, pasta in the bottom of the shower. It's not a, it's not a pleasant thing. 
And uh, so that's how we met. And then uh, we ended up in Mexico together because he had a, uh, darn it. Well, I'll have to go back to the other way of doing it. Damn, I don't want to do that. We had a, uh, he had a uh, trailer in uh, Mexico. And uh, he invited Matt and I one time down to uh, stay with him. So we came down and stayed in the trailer and uh, had a great time. And then Matt's mother was building a house. She and her husband were building a house. And they were living in a trailer and they'd finished the house and uh, said that I could, uh, I thought, well, I could buy that trailer. I got a real good deal on the trailer. So I bought the trailer and moved it next to his trailer in Estero Beach. And we were there for about two or three years until uh, they had put in these lights that were like, uh, it was like, we used to set out underneath the stars outside the trailer and look at the stars and build a campfire. And then all of a sudden, there was this, uh, we were, uh, they, they put in these uh, halogen lights. And it was like living in the middle of Dodger Stadium. I mean, I could actually read the newspaper inside the trailer with no lights on because it was so bright. And so we just said, we got to get out of here. And then we found we found this place, brought the trailers here, and uh, built the house. So that's, I don't know, you know, you know what? I don't know any other men that really live together unless they're gay. Do you know any, any guys that live together? Or women, for that matter, that live together that... Lots of people do when they're younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah when they're younger. Do you know any people when they're older? Do you know of any besides uh, Maurice and myself? I know of no one. I can't, I can't, no, I don't know of anyone. I know, I know of guys that live together, but they're all gay, and I know of women that live together, but, and they're gay. But I don't know of any non-gays. So it'd probably be very easy for us to apply for some kind of a gay, you know, uh, <laughs> some type, like the police department at one time was under pressure to, uh, to hire gays, and, uh, it would be, they, we could probably, con I could probably say I'm gay and get a job because uh, I live with somebody. Because they, I, I, you know, they... I, a little bit of change of career and... Yeah, yeah. What's the craziest thing you ever saw him do? A Reese? Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. I don't know. See, I can't, this isn't going to work either. I can't, uh, I don't have enough... Uh, Uh, the craziest thing that Aris did, I don't think of Aris as doing crazy things. Do you think of him as doing crazy things? Well, I don't see him all the time, so. Crazy thing. Yeah, he was a revolutionary when he was a kid. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't know him then. But that may not be crazy. Being a revolutionary? Yeah. Uh, no, but I would think you'd be put in a situation where you'd probably do a lot of crazy stuff. I've got to check this over. There, there, I can't believe that this isn't going to work. <laughs> 